Hey guys, welcome to Jack's Beautiful You. My name is Jackie and on this channel we mostly talk about perfumes. Today's video we are going to be doing a declutter. Yes, another declutter. This is my last declutter of 2024. If you're new to my channel, I am trying to curate my collection to only loves. So I'm being really, really picky and cutthroat and I'm getting rid of anything that doesn't bring me absolute joy. And uh, some of these fragrances I actually still really love, but they're repetitive in my collection. And I'm just trying to keep my collection manageable. <laughs> I still have more fragrances coming in. I have a haul video that I'm going to be doing soon. So I'm just trying to curate my collection as best as I can. So if you're interested in seeing what fragrances didn't make the cut, then just keep on watching. Okay, so some of these fragrances aren't going to be a surprise because I told you not to be surprised if you saw them in an upcoming declutter, but some of them, I will warn you, <laughs> they're a little shocking. Even to me, I wasn't expecting to end up decluttering them. So uh, this video might not be for the easily offended, but if you like a good cutthroat declutter, then here you go. All right, so let's just start and rip the bandaid off here because this was one that I didn't expect to ever declutter. This was a fragrance that I absolutely loved. So let me tell you what it is and then I'm going to explain why I'm decluttering it because I have told you guys how much I love this fragrance in the past. This is by Carolina Herrera Amethyst Haze. I know, right? Like, okay, here's the deal. <laughs> this fragrance, I tested a sample of it before I purchased it. I had a sample, absolutely loved it, bought the bottle, absolutely loved it wore it for the season this is a fall winter fragrance super cozy super comforting fragrance wore it and then put it away for spring and summer then fall came back around this fall came back around the weather has been actually pretty cool here lately and so i've been pulling out you know my fall fragrances just super super excited and i realized i hadn't worn this one since last fall i was super excited to wear it to bed because it's such a cozy comforting fragrance sprayed it on and the fragrance has definitely gotten deeper and a lot of some of the notes that originally I was scared of but didn't really make out too much of it at first they're front and center now what I'm talking about specifically is the lavender the lavender in here has become so strong and aromatic that this is not an enjoyable fragrance for me to wear anymore. It wasn't like that when I first bought this. Last fall, it had a small touch of lavender with this cashmere, smooth, vanilla, slight coffee. The coffee is still slight in here. And that lavender was there and it was aromatic, but not like it is now. So this has definitely oxidized and gotten way stronger. And I just, I was laying there trying to go to sleep and that lavender was bothering me so much and I was like oh no I was really pretty disappointed because this was a fragrance that I truly truly loved so I'm really bummed because like I said I used to love this fragrance I just don't love it anymore you know it's like that song that like 80s or early 90s song I don't even know who sings it the it must have been love but it's over now it must have been good, but I lost it somehow. Goodbye, Amethyst Haze. Oh, by the way, these will all be listed on my Mercari at some point. I haven't gotten around to putting them up yet, <laughs> but I will eventually. So I'll leave my Mercari in the description box. You can check it if you're interested in any of these. I will eventually get them up. Okay, so next up. Okay, this one I have before anybody comes for me on this one. I have a really, really good explanation, okay? <laughs> yeah, okay, hold on to something. This is by <laughs> the House of Oud What About Pop. I love this fragrance. This is one of my favorite fall fragrances in my collection. It smells like salty, buttery caramel popcorn. Ever since this came into my collection, I have recommended it to you in several videos. It's a delicious, fantastic gourmand. So why am I decluttering it? The only reason I'm decluttering it is because I found another fragrance that smells 
like caramel popcorn that I prefer slightly more than this one. It's a little bit more realistic, if that's possible, <laughs> to caramel popcorn. So I will haul this for you, but just so you know what I'm talking about, this is by Viva More and this is Caramel Pop. So I had heard a bunch of people talking about this fragrance, but it was out of stock. I got a notification it was back in stock and I snatched it up because I had heard so many people say this is super, super realistic to caramel popcorn and holy crap it is. And this one is more on the caramel than this one is. And I just slightly prefer this one. So I don't need two fragrances that smell like caramel popcorn <laughs> in my collection. So I am going to let this one go, but I still highly love and recommend this fragrance. So this is by the House of Oud, What About Pop? All right, one that no one is gonna be surprised by. I did not like this fragrance. I blind bought it. I just got a travel spray of it, but the travel spray is already gone. It won't be on my Mercari because it's gone, but it is by Replica Afternoon Delight. So that one, you know, I told you guys it wasn't at all what I expected. It was so, so light. And I was expecting just a really lactonic, gourmand, yummy, delicious cookie fragrance. And it wasn't that for me at all. It was super, super light. And it just, it just didn't give me what I was looking for. And I just found the performance to be pretty bad. So yeah, I, I wasn't impressed with that one. I told you guys I wasn't gonna keep it. So I don't think anyone's surprised by that. But just letting you know, I did let go of Afternoon Delight. Okay, up next we have by The Seven Virtues. This is Candied Lychee. I did get a travel spray of this and I actually ended up decluttering it. I didn't realize, I thought at first when I got it, it was a blind buy. I thought when I first sprayed it and tried it out that I liked it. But once I did the full body wear, something weird happened and there was like a medicinal vibe to the fragrance on me. I don't know if it was my skin chemistry or what, but it ended up smelling like cough syrup on me and I ended up not liking it at all. I will say the performance was really good though. So there's that. And I'm not sure that everyone's gonna get cough. I really do think it was a skin chemistry thing. It didn't smell like that on paper, but when I sprayed it all over on my skin, that's when it just, it just did not work out for me. There's something in the fragrance that doesn't work with my skin. All right, up next, I'm getting rid of another lychee fragrance. This is by Nest and this is Lychee Rose. This fragrance I bought <laughs> a little in haste. I had only smelled it once in store. I thought it smelled really good. And really the bottle, look at how cute this bottle is. It's stinking adorable and yeah, that kills me. That kills me. But how stupid. How just absolutely stupid of me to buy this fragrance because I wanted the bottle and I smelled it once and I was like, oh, that smells nice. Yeah, I like the bottle. I'm going to buy it. I have impulse issues. <laughs> anyway, so this fragrance, it, it's not for me. It's not sweet enough. There's something kind of tart in this fragrance that just isn't, it's not it's just not working for me. It's nice, I don't hate it by any means. It smells nice enough that when I smelled it in store, I thought, oh, that smells nice. But realistically, I'm never gonna reach for this because it's just, it, there's something too tart in here. I will say that the performance is really good on this though. So that's a bonus. If you like fragrances, you know, if you like lychee, if you like rose and you're not into like overly sweet fragrances, this is actually a really good one for, you know, just because it doesn't meet my personal taste doesn't mean I can't recognize that this is a good fragrance. So I do recommend it if it's your scent profile, but for me, it's just, it's, I'm never gonna reach for this. Okay, this next one is a surprise. I was not expecting this at all because I actually really like this fragrance. This is on my tray for October and it, it's not working. So this is by YSL Black Opium Le Parfum. And this one is, a lot of vanilla. It smells like black opium. It has black opium DNA, but it has a ton of vanilla. I think there's like three or four different types of vanilla in this fragrance. And that's what makes this so good. And it is really good and it smells good. And this is the first black opium that has like really decent performance on me. It's, it lasts, it lasts for sure. <laughs> Unfortunately for me, because even though I enjoy the smell of this, this fragrance gives me the worst headache of my life and it happened twice so I wore it and I had a headache and I didn't put the I didn't correlate this with my headache 
at first. I didn't realize this caused my headache. And so I was kind of miserable all day. I had this like raging headache. Uh, a few days later, I decided to wear this again, got another raging headache. And then I was like, aha, <laughs> I think I found the problem, you know? And so unfortunately for me, this one is just, I cannot wear it. I don't know what it is in the fragrance. I enjoy the way it smells, but I, this gives me a freaking migraine. And, uh, I don't know. I, I've only had one other fragrance do that to me that I had to let go of because it made me, now I can't think of it. It was a long time ago. That's very rare for me. It is very, very rare that a perfume will give me a headache. I have a pretty strong tolerance for, I can sniff perfumes forever and not get a headache. And yeah, it's just not normal <laughs> for me. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure what it is about this fragrance, but I can't wear it. All right, we've got this absolute monstrosity. <laughs> this is by Latafa Sir, Sir, Sir. I think it's Sir is how you pronounce it. This is the one with the bottle that is a weapon. That is just so ugly. <laughs> it's so ugly. But, you know, I don't, I didn't really care about that all that much. I was just really intrigued by the smell. I've had this for a, like a month or at least a month and a half now maybe two months. I've definitely given this time to macerate and it's not getting any better for me. There's something in here that just really is off for me. The, yes, this has the tonka and some people say it kind of smells like velvet tonka kind of in that same, not exactly, it's not, not a dupe for velvet tonka. It's definitely not a dupe for velvet tonka. I love velvet tonka, but you know, it's got a lot of like a tonka bean almondy, I think scent to it and I get all of that and that's all good but there's this underlying I think it's the Gaiac wood there's Gaiac wood in here and it's just I can pick it up like a bloodhound I mean sometimes Gaiac wood works for me and sometimes it doesn't it just depends on the composition the quality the you know it just depends on how it's done but in here I can't I can't do it it smells on my skin it smells like there's gasoline in the fragrance and I know that's just my, I know that's my skin chemistry and the Gaiac wood, I think it's the Gaiac wood anyway, clashing and somehow that it smells like, it smells like gas. <laughs> and I, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Okay, this next fragrance, this one is tough for me to let go of because I've loved this fragrance and I still love it. It's just that I have other, I have a ton of rose fragrances. So I'm a big rose lover. I love rose perfumes. And this one went all spring and summer without getting worn. And I didn't, yeah, I didn't touch it once because I was reaching, when I wanted a rose fragrance, I was reaching for everything else but this. This one hurts a little bit, but this is by Carolina Herrera, Very Good Girl. I think I've just outgrown it. Not that I, I hate, sometimes I don't, when people say that, sometimes it can sound a little, I don't mean it in a, like a pretentious kind of way, like, oh, I've outgrown it. <laughs> I don't mean it like that. I just mean like, I feel like my time with it has come to an end. I think that's a better way to put it. My time with this fragrance, I really loved this fragrance. I still do, but like I said, I just have so many other rose fragrances at this point that I will reach for and prefer over this one. So it's just not getting worn. And this is a beautiful rose lychee fragrance with some vanilla and it's just beautiful. It has really good performance and I love it. It's got just the right amount. It's got some tartness to it, but it also has enough sweetness to it that the tartness isn't over the top for me. I think it's time for me to let this one go because I'm just not reaching for it. So someone else needs to be loving this fragrance. Okay, up next we have a fragrance that I bought. I should have thought this through before I bought it. <laughs> this is actually a fantastic fragrance. It really is. It's just extremely repetitive in my collection. This is by Boucheron Ombre d'Alexandre and this is that kind of angel share DNA, but it, this doesn't smell like Angel Share. It has that same, it, it could definitely be a cousin to Angel Share. It has that same apple pie kind of feel to it. There's a ton, a ton of amber in this. This is extremely ambery and it's not boozy like Angel Share is. So my thought process when I got this perfume was that I wanted kind of like a more toned down Angel Share for fall day 
And then like angel share is something I would wear more like special occasions and things like that. But what I discovered is I just have this scent profile like five different times. Again, they all, they all have their own little, um, you know, their own little twists, their own differences. They're not exact dupes for each other, but I do have a lot of this scent profile. I love this scent profile. That's why I have so many in this family, but this one's just so, so repetitive. So I wore this the other day and I was like, oh, I, I'm never going to reach for this one. You know, I'm going to reach for my angel share i'm going to reach for unui nomad sugar leather i'm going to reach for cult at night again different fragrances but all in that same family i'm going to reach for all those before i reach for this one so I, i'm just going to let it go all right up next we have by ellis brooklyn miami nectar i just got a travel spray of it but i have to say you guys i wasn't overly impressed with this fragrance i gave it a few shots and really i don't know there's something about it that i just don't love everybody hyped this up like it was so fantastic and it's not bad by any means like it smells good but it almost pulls a little masculine on my skin i'm not sure what's causing that i ended up just not absolutely loving it plus i didn't find the performance to be all that great on me either this was the it summer fragrance i swear everybody was talking about it and I'm really glad I didn't buy a full-size bottle because it just, just didn't work out for me. I don't think anyone's going to be surprised by this one. This one is by City Rhythm, and this is a travel spray of St. John. I was really surprised I didn't like this one. It's very fruity, very, very fruity, and I love tropical fruity scents. And this is definitely that. But I think there's ambergris in here. There's something in the fragrance that I did not enjoy. The ambergris just was, it smelled marine-like. It smelled like ocean water mixed with a bunch of fruits. I think it's the ambergris that does ruin the composition for me and just it just didn't work out for me. So this is by City Rhythm St. John. Okay, another fragrance that I have really loved in the past, but I went all summer without touching it. So that's a sign, you know? It's a sign that I've outgrown the fragrance and I've just, I have other fragrances in my collection that I prefer, I guess. Ooh, this one's tough, because I really do like this one. But I didn't, like I said, I didn't touch it all summer. All spring, all summer, and that's when I wear this fragrance. And I didn't even wear it once. So this is by Lancome. This is Idole Aura. Salty, rosy, vanilla fragrance that smells like summertime to me. This is, I think it's the salt. Oh, this is so pretty. <laughs> I shouldn't smell this because I've already made up my mind that I'm letting this go. Amazing performance. Amazing performance. It's a beautiful, beautiful summertime rosy vanilla fragrance, but you do have to like salt in your fragrances. That salt note is in here. It kind of gives me a slight watermelon feel. Like I feel like there's watermelon in this fragrance, but there's not. I think it's just the combination of how the rose and the salt play with each other. But like I said, I didn't reach for it one time during the spring and summer. So it's got to go. Another fragrance that is on my tray for October. I really, really, really like this fragrance. And I think that it's a great fragrance. Like I highly recommend it. But I prefer other flankers of this. So this is by Giorgio Armani. And this is My Way Parfum. And this one is the Iris one. And there's lots and lots of iris in here, and it's it's sweet and it's uber, uber strong. And I think it might be a little too strong. Like this is beast, beast mode. And the reason why I have it on my tray for October is because I can't wear it in the, normally this is the type of fragrance I would wear in springtime or summer, an irisy perfume. But because this is so strong, I just can't wear it in hot weather. And then I wore it a couple of times and I just kind of wished I had on the original My Way. I just prefer My Way and My Way Intense are my two favorites. Uh, I don't have My Way Intense, but I do plan on getting that once I go through my OG My Way. And I like this version. I, if you're an Iris lover, I would highly recommend that you check this out because Iris is the star of the show. It doesn't really smell like the original. I mean, it has a little bit of the original in it, but the tuberose is toned way down and the Iris is front and center. But this is such a strong, I mean, you are committed to wearing this fragrance. Just a couple of sprays and it is like, 
this is your fragrance for the day. <laughs> it's not coming off, okay, until you take a shower. I don't know. This isn't really the scent profile that I want to wear in cold weather, and it's too strong for me to wear it in hot weather, so it's just not working for me. All right, this next one is actually a really great fragrance. It's a good, affordable fragrance, and I do recommend it, but it's just it's really really repetitive in my collection so this is by Rasasi. this is Cosimot Ebhar and this one is it, it smells very very similar to Swiss Arabian Casablanca the only real difference is that this is more vanilla forward and Casablanca is more caramel forward but they smell pretty similar this also gives me a tar collection crystal love for her vibes Again, they're not dupes, but they're in the same family, and I already have Crystal Love for her, and I love that fragrance, and so this one didn't make the cut. <laughs> I prefer Casablanca over this one. Okay, the last one that I know for sure I'm going to declutter, and I do have a couple more, but they're not 100% for sure. They're on the chopping block, so I'm not going to talk about those. If you see them on my Mercari, you know I decided to declutter them. <laughs> so there might be more than this on my Mercari. I am still trying to decide. This one I do know for sure. I'm going to declutter though. This is the last one I know for sure. This is by Veronique Goodbye Souvenirs de Tunisie. And this is a fragrance that I absolutely loved when I first got it. It's another one of those situations where there's a note that has gotten stronger that I just, I can't do it. So I pulled this one out. This is a summertime fragrance for sure. And it actually still smells the way I remember it smelling off the cap. Yeah, this smells really, really good. I, I used to love this fragrance. This has orange blossom and orange in the opening. It has like a citrusy, florally, it's white floral, it's citrusy. There's watery notes, but it doesn't smell marine to me. And then it has some neroli and some sandalwood. And the composition of this is was originally, I, I thought this was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. And I still, when I smell it off the cap, I, I think it smells amazing. However, when I wore it over the summer, I was shocked at how strong the neroli came forward. It didn't do that to me the first, you know, when I first wore this fragrance the summer before, I didn't really feel like that sharp. It almost smells like pedigrain to me. There's like a green sharpness that's coming through in this fragrance that I didn't pick up on before. So I don't know if that note has just gotten stronger with time, but the last couple of times I've worn it, I just could not. The neroli, I think, I mean, it doesn't list pedigree in here, so I'm guessing it's the neroli, but it's a green, sharp, bitter neroli that is ruining the fragrance for me, unfortunately. And yeah, that just stinks so bad because there was a point where I just loved this fragrance. Are you surprised by any of these? I'm surprised by some of these. <laughs> Some of these are just absolutely, uh, sh I never in a bazillion, trillion, gajillion years thought I would be getting rid of this, ever. But, and I also never, ever thought I'd be getting rid of Amethyst Haze either. So anyway, but that's just what happens sometimes. So thank you so, so much for watching. I truly appreciate you. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I hope everybody is having an amazing day and hopefully I will see you in my next video. Bye.